Y'all got your drink, fellas. That my drink. It was like, ooh, Al lips look so good. I got good everything. Trust what me. else you got good, Al? <laughs> Take a look at that picture I sent you. Ooh. I just figured I'd get the girls a little preview <laughs> of the spring summer collection, aka okay. my body. It is TGIF. This is what y'all came for, right? Y'all came for this. Hey everybody, welcome back to TGIF, the Friday, the second show of the week. I hope everybody had a fantastic week. We are back and excited about the show. We had a lot of comments on last week's show, and I'm glad that our conversation, our ability to have these real conversations sparked a whole bunch of debates and actually garnered a lot of support for the viewpoints of, especially of, uh, of Q, Funk and Aniva. You had some really good points. So without further ado, let me introduce my fantastic panel, my co-host. Uh, give it up for brand strategist, Mr. Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. What's up, Claudia? Look, you see my background? I look better, right? No glory holes. He over, no there. He, he over there at Dr. Dre Studio about to get the mess knocked out of him like Michelle A. <laughs> Please welcome a multimedia personality and talk show host, Funky Dineva. Hey, Q. Y'all, I'm feeling a little better today. My emotions, I went and got me some birth control pills to help regulate, help regulate my hormones. Oh, my I'm, God. I'm still a little raw, and I had to fly my dude I'm talking to. I'm, I flew him in from Atlanta. He'll be landing while I'm still on the air, and hopefully he give me something I could feel in the words of a <laughs> and have me back right by Monday. But in the meantime, in between time, baby, I'm here. I am present and ready to cuss out whatever ass deserves it on this damn roster today. How y'all doing? No, you know, you know what? Let, listen, you know, <laughs> let, let's have it. Last week's show. You mean Wednesday show? Wednesday show, y'all. It, it, it that was one of those shows that's gonna get us an Emmy one day. Yeah, that's the kind of show you want to do. That's it was kind of raw. Show. It was real. Um, I'm still messed up, not because of the show per se, but because of the subject matter at hand and how it transcends into larger Black life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm still very raw and exposed right now. And that's why I had to fly my guy in, because I'm not going to lie. I really need to ball up on a sofa right now and just have somebody hold me and let me cry for a little bit. That, that, that really is where I'm at with it right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard being black. It's hard being black and gay. It's hard being black and a woman. And Claudia, I was thinking just before I did my makeup, I think that there is a town hall that needs to be had between TGIF and Queens of Cocktails. So we can talk about the intersectionality of being black and gay and being black and a woman. I think that it's something that is dope. I'm putting it out there, and I think that we could do it on one of these one-off nights, and mm -hmm. we would blow the ratings through the roof. So powers that be that are listening, let's do that. Let's also solicit the help of a, uh, somebody who specializes in that area, a Black psychiatrist, a Black sociologist that can help us talk about the intersectionality of oppression. I think that that would be one for the history books for Fox Soul. I agree oh, that's with you. Idea. That's actually a great idea, Funky. Well, you know, I speak for the Queens when I say we are definitely open to all that kind of stuff. We want to just, uh, you know, continue the conversation. You know, that's the whole point of having a talk show. It's fun to have our little moments on, you know, and go viral. But really, you want to talk and you want to help to kind of move the ball along to get some, you know, some healing for some people. You know, there's a lot. Of, I think a lot of times we don't think of people, of trauma until it happens to us. Like a lot of times it's hard to be um, sensitive to it until it happens to us. So why not? Let's let's open, let's get it going. I'm with it. I'm um, those with that it. be in a perfect world. If we could get Iyanla, if we could get uh, Dr. Jeffrey, yes, Dr. Jeffries would be a good one. I mean, the powers that be work on it. And let's see if we can make that happen in the next 30, 45 days. I'd even be willing to forego my salary for that episode to help pay that person's booking fee because the conversation is needed. Well, hold uh, up, man. Hold on, He's, hold on. <laughs> he speaks for himself because he got that YouTube money coming, so he, he, he good. By fucking Dandiva are not the views of Al and Claudia. <laughs> but Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff, Iyanla, um, oh. 
a lot of the we it needs to happen. Well, I think we can make that happen. Both of them have been on my show, and um, they are fans and fr they're friends of Foxall. So I think, I think it done happen. Look at that. Okay, for Q pitching a show during the live broadcast. Okay. And before we go on, a lot of people thought that you were made to apologize last week. And I didn't like that. I was in the comments defending, like, no, no one made him. No, ain't no one making Funky do anything. And I was just like, stop. So, no, guys, just for the record, I was not made to apologize. Just the professional in me at some point. I was like, you know, Q, you may have gotten just a little more emotional than you should have. And just out of anybody that you may have bothered, you know, I don't like to see myself like that. But I do recognize that I am human and sometimes things hit me in a place. And then when that Captain Morgan is hitting, coupled with, you know, the stress, <laughs> listen, the stress of the world. Y'all understand what it's being like to be a black woman, to be a gay black man, and then to have to come to your entertainment space and be further degraded and put down is just my cup had runneth over with the BS. And unfortunately it showed itself that way, but I meant everything I said, if I could do anything differently, I would have expressed myself a tad bit differently, but I meant every single morsel of what came out my mouth. I stand by it. I double down on it. And whoever don't want it, I'm on this liquor right tonight, this liquid curve as you can get the smoke. So <laughs> Come on, Claudia. We better keep it moving before we get this man round up there. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get into the show. Okay. Um, okay. We're going to get past this. Uh, okay. Don't there do it. Updates. No, there, no, there, there, do it. We'll do it. We're just not going to have the greater conversation. Do it. On Wednesday's show, we, we had a really passionate uh, conversation about Rappa, the baby's, con you know, recent controversial remarks. Well, now it seems like he's digging even deeper, uh, a, dig a deeper hole for himself after responding to a post made by musician Quest Love. Quest Love don't bother nobody, by the way. He is peace. Right. Quest Love was asked if uh, he were to curate an updated version of Summer Soul, who would be a part of it? On the list that Quest Love posted to his Instagram page, the baby's name was crossed out. The baby responded to the post by stating, I ain't even trying to be funny, but I don't know who this N word is, dog. <laughs> Baby don't know who Quest Love is? Is he just throwing shade? He just, uh, he's probably feeling defensive right about now since everybody came for him, including Madonna. What do y'all think? You think you don't know who Quest Love is? I, I honestly believe the ignorant son of a bitch don't. <laughs> well, someone posted a picture where he was on stage with Quest Love behind him playing the drums. So <clears throat> you guys know, I, you know me and my list now, so I'm going to come uh, with it, my list. I'm going to give you three reasons why we know the baby, once again, is not taking accountability and deflecting. All right, number one, Claudia and Funky, y'all know this. When you go on set, especially when you're doing a musical act, you have to go to rehearsal. He's been on Jimmy Fallon how many times? Like at least three or four times, which he had to do rehearsal with Quest Love. That's number one. So not only did he see him doing rehearsal, we saw that on the internet, but we also saw him on the show with Quest Love behind him. That's number one. Number two. Now, when you're in the green room, ladies and gentlemen, when you're invited to these shows, they put you in a green room. And when you're in the green room, they prep you for the show. So, you know, he's uh, telling a field number two, because in the green room where they're micing him, he's he's watching the show. They let him know when he goes on. And we all know that Quest Love is Jimmy Fallon's, you know, co-guy. He always throws to him. He always talks to Quest Love. He's a part of the show. And number three which is more than anything, Questlove has been in the game for 20 years. He has three Grammys and been a nominated for an additional 11. He has been a fixture in the hip hop culture for 20 years. If you don't know who Questlove with that Afro and pick is, then you maybe are as crazy as you're coming off right now. Um, I did Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon show before. Um, Jimmy Fallon show. I've been on his show. And the first thing people want to do is is go talk to the group. Quest Love. <laughs> like the roots, yeah. like everyone goes and says what's up to them. They're very they're very cool. And the whole group down to earth. And I mean, it it's unfathomable to think that you could not go on that show and not go straight to Quest Love and see him. He's a fixture in the show. He's a huge part of the show. And he's right. big part of a big, listen, I get the baby. I understand it's really hard when everyone's coming from, from your, for your throat, but you're just going to have to just take this one and getting defensive with everyone is not going to help. You know what I mean? Like just, you know, 
make it a teachable moment and move on and making it worse. And you are actually a talented rapper and you have a huge following. Don't mess up this bag with this nonsense by being ignorant. Like, get it together. All right, let's move on. Um, Will Smith is set to star as Venus and Sir Williams' father, Richard Williams, in the upcoming biopic surrounding his life. It looks really good, actually. But it seems like Amanda Seals isn't a fan of Will portraying the role of the father. In response to the trailer, Amanda stated, Will Smith is playing Richard Williams. Also, why is this film about Richard Williams? Now, Amanda received a response from a user that mentioned that her point was weak because Will played the role of uh, Chris Gardner in The Pursuit of Happiness and received an Oscar nomination, even though the actor is a lighter complexion than the character he's playing. Do you think Amanda's response to Will's role is regarding color and colorism? And what are your thoughts on Will portraying the role of Richard Williams? You know, I definitely don't think this is as far-fetched as Zoe Saldana playing Nina Simone. Um, you know, <laughs> we have got to be careful. Will is a good actor. Will right. is an A-list actor. Uh, you know, several questions to be answered. So why is this story about Richard Williams? Well, there's a story there to be told. You know what I'm saying? There is a story. We know the story somewhat of Venus and Serena, but there is a story to be told for the person that made them Venus and Serena. Now, if her only, you know, real concern is about the color, then I think we've got to be very careful. That's a very slippery slope because just because a person happened to be in real life three shades darker than the person that's playing them in the movie does not mean that that person cannot effectively play the role. And if we are to dispel all this colorism stuff, this, that, and third, then we need to be able to, as viewers, sit down and see the story for what it is and not get caught up in the fact that the daddy was light dark skin and Will is light skin. It, 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 it's a weak argument. If Will is the best man for the job, and we have seen that he is an A-list actor that can do very good work in these roles, then let it be. And not to mention, there are only but so many a-list, brown skin, dark skin actors that are available who have the range. They may not have been available. Don Cheadle is too short and too skinny. Aldous Hodge is too goddamn fine and too tall. Denzel Washington is too damn old and he's somewhere having dinner with Pauletta and Oprah. Will might have been the only one available to take the part. Hell, he ain't got nothing to do since Jada around there, fool our line and broke his heart with uh, Algis Alcina and quite as his kept. She probably right there with T-Pain and Justin Bieber and everybody else right now. That man needs something to do. And this script came across his table and it gave him something to do. I'm here for Amanda. Go sit down on this one. Al, what do you think? So, you know, to me, Amanda has been one of the most outspoken, social conscious entertainers in the game right now. That's I'm just confused as to why she's talking about this. Amanda, where is your commentary about the baby's homophobic, insensitive attack on the gay community, the LBGTQ community, and those that are living with AIDS? I kind of want to know your perspective on that. Let's talk about that. And also something else that I want to know, I know this is off topic, but something else I want to know. When I looked at all the pictures of Issa Rae's wedding, I didn't see um, Amanda Seals anywhere. So kind of like, why? Well, I wonder why she wasn't at the wedding. That's where my mind is as it relates to Amanda Seals. Well, it's, it came out. Already hit. it's already hit. The cast of Insecure don't F with her. You oh, know, really? it, it, oh yeah, it, it hit on multiple articles. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here. There was a party in Hollywood where the publicist invited all of Insecure. She got to the door and they would not let her in. And wow. then um, I forgot the guy's name, Adonis, Haldonis, something to that effect. Forgive me. He came out and basically say, what do you expect for being a bitch all the time? Nobody wants to be around you. That's why your ass ain't get into the party. So it's known that she is and can be problematic amongst the cookout. Gotcha. All right. All right. Well, we, we have to take a quick break. Um, real quick, Will Smith's a great actor. And, you know, it's not like they got um, 
the debarge one of the debarges yeah. to play this role where it's super <laughs> unfeasible. And or one of those Tyler Perry actors for the <laughs> god awful damn shows on own. I mean, Jesus. And I will say this: why, why is that movie about Richard Williams? Well, the, the I, I, apparently Venus and Serena are EPs on this, so they signed off on it. So it's something All that right. they wanted to do for their dad. So we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be back with more TGIF. I'm gonna get me a drink. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. I'm your girl Claudia Jordan, joined by Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. I forgot to ask y'all, uh, what y'all drinking tonight? Baby, I'm drinking a little bit of Bacardi Superior <laughs> rum mixed with some grapefruit juice. My sister left in my refrigerator. They have to know I don't drink no grapefruit, but I mix it with this liquor. <laughs> okay, Al, what are, you, uh, what, are you, what are you drinking on? Water. I'm <laughs> so disgusted. I'm, in, I, I'm off schedule because, you know, in Los Angeles, it's seven o'clock. So I'm just like, Party is Shug Knight won't let him have no water, no Dr. Hall. <laughs> in the studio. I Al, just heard us talking about him. He won't let us have none. Al, what studio you in tonight? Dr. Dre's, where he beat Michelle <laughs> ass at. <laughs> well, speaking of beating, there's been another incident involving an unarmed Black woman in law enforcement. Once again, it's been circling, circulating around the internet for the past few days. A Kaufman County Sheriff's deputy was spotted pinning a woman to the ground for several minutes. Uh, according to local affiliates, the sheriff was called to the scene after receiving a call from someone who claimed the woman. Nikki, <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> Wait, hold up, hold up. I, I have to address this. You be blowing your nose, <laughs> picking your nose, burping, doing all kinds of personal shit on this show, and you gonna respect us like you respect VH1, damn it, when you do that. You don't do that on that show. Well, listen, I be trying to do it when y'all be on the damn stories. It's up to the damn person in the background to see that I'm having a personal and healthy emergency back here <laughs> and to not pan the camera can, back to me, okay? We can it's, still hear you. Can you, yo, is can that you the mute? Corey's fault? Is that no, the no, 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 because he think. needs to hold mute on. himself for bodily I, functions. I could have stayed home to be embarrassed. If you don't take your oh. ass to the next story, <laughs> we all go, go get cussed out. On is, that, is that your phone? Hold on. And, and hold your on. phone's ringing. Oh, you want to take it? Send me a text message because I'm on the air right now. My co host are hollering me. Send me a text. I can't. I work with now. two of the most ghetto people, y'all. So I ghetto. Claudia so answered the phone call for my mama. <laughs> Q don't know how to put his shit on mute. And now I'm real mad because my man just texted me and said they canceled my flight. So look. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> now, oh, baby, anything about to happen on this damn show tonight. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. Now, what were we talking about? Okay, let's get into that story about the sheriff, uh, the, the police officer pinning an old girl to the floor, to the ground. Now the sheriff was called to the scene after receiving a call from someone that claimed that the woman, Nikia Trigg, was jumping out in front of cars. So that's why they were called to the scene. But in the video, there's no cars in sight. And as you can see, the officer lying on top of Nikia as she screams, it's 102 out here, I cannot breathe. What are your thoughts on just another case of this police brutality? What do y'all think? Pass me, because y'all know I'm already in the emotional <laughs> state, right? We gonna get cut, so just pass me. It's okay, Al. So um, I'm gonna have to come to the defense of the police department, and let me share my story as to what really happened here. So this young lady allegedly uh, deals with mental illness issues, and people in the community are very familiar with who she is. In fact, the person who called the police is someone who was familiar with her and told them that she was... Uh, you know, jumping out in front of traffic. So when the police officer responded to the call and saw her jumping out into traffic and, and, and you know, being very erratic, he then tried to perform a restraint. And so the one thing about this, if anybody works in a system with mental ill people, and my brother does, and I actually called him and I showed him the video and he explained to me what was going on. So in the school system, they have what's called the mat hole, or they have what's called a uh, crisis prevention intervention. And so the police department in that state does not exercise that, but what they do exercise is restraints. And this particular restraint is one that you put the, the person's hands above their head so they are, don't have any obstruction in breathing, and you talk the person down. You try to calm them down because she's, you know, mentally dealing with mental illness. So as far as I could see, he did practice the protocol of the particular um, 
police department and as it relates to the state's protocol and procedures when you run across someone with mental illness. So the fact that she threw up, my brother said, who is a PhD in this in this space, said that that was from her adrenaline and her adrenaline in in being caught up in the scene and all of the screaming is probably what caused her to throw up. It had nothing to do with the positioning of the officer on the young lady because the restraint that he used was a part of protocol and procedure. Seems weird that that's be part of protocol. She's on her back and it seemed like they had control of her and they're still, he still maintained his weight. We just saw George Floyd die for, die for being, you know, mounted. So, well, in this case, there was no obstruction of any air passages or any airway. And so normally what happens in these cases, so I'm told by the professionals, because I did make outbound calls around this, is that you're supposed to, you're supposed to actually cradle them. But in this particular case, the officer states that he was not able to cradle her. And so in his restraint move, his a whole thing was to make sure her airways were open and that she was safe. And so at that time, he chose the protocol and procedure that that particular uh, uh, station and state exercises. All right. I'm, I'm definitely glad, though, that we've seen, I think California has led the charge in terms of creating a specific department for mental health calls. Right. I right. will say one thing that is unfair to the police and that they don't pay those people enough for the police is the dumping basket that when we have a problem and we don't know where it go, call the police. There's a rabid dog outside, <laughs> call the police. There's a lady showing her titties outside, call the police. There's, you know, what? The, there's a car on the side of the road, call the police. The police are the dumping ground for everything and at least through some of whatever, we are getting a bit more progressive in our society in terms of uh, what to do when things like that happen. You know, I guess I just, nowadays we have to be grateful that she didn't lose her life nowadays. Yeah, it could go anyway now with that being said. You know what I mean? But this one definitely wasn't racially charged and it's not a Black Lives Matter situation. And I know that our emotions as Black people are so raw. The moment we see white cop, Black person, we instantly go there. But we have to realize that everything is not yeah, that. In this right. instance, I'm with Al. That man was doing his job based on the training. And I'm just glad that he and she both have their lives. Well, speaking right. of black and white, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's star, Alfonso Ribeiro, recently spoke on people, uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry, recently spoke on trying to overcome the obstacle of people judging him throughout his career. He stated that he doesn't feel loved by black people because of his interracial relationship. He mentioned that he always gets comments about his wife being white and how it's been hard for him to cope with those statements. What are your thoughts? Well, you know what? Black people in this country have a very hard time. And Claudia, I think sometimes you can attest to this too. We tend to have this monolithic idea of what it means to be a black person. And that means you drink fried chicken, drink red Kool-Aid, you know Frankie Beverly and Mays and know how to do the electric slide at the cookout. And oftentimes when people deviate from that archetype, people get, we get the house syndrome versus versus field Negro syndrome that uh, we don't get you. If you happen to be a white person that grew up in the Valley of California and you speak very white and you don't know what collard greens, cornbread and hog mogs are, Black people as a whole, we tend to be a little standoffish from you because you come off a little not like us, a little house Negro. And I think that's what we get from Alfonso Ribeiro. It doesn't help that the character that he played on The Fresh Prince was completely out of touch from the general herd of Black people. Some people may find my comments ignorant. Yes, I do recognize and understand that there are upper echelon Black people that hang out in the Hamptons, so on and so forth, but that is not most of us or whatever the case may be. So I think it makes people uncomfortable coupled with the fact that then he don't went off and married this white woman it further undergirds what people already thought about them it's just a comfort thing Al? um first of all it's let's take a poll i mean do any of us know who he's married to a have white ever, woman i know but have we ever seen her do we know did we know he got married there I she think, go 
<laughs> okay, we see it now probably because we had to Google it. But let, let me, I feel like this. I feel like when you have that level of stardom that early in your career and when it fizzles out, you are reaching for straws as to why you can't reignite that same fame in a different fashion. And everybody on that cast, if you look at them, have been able to find their space after Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? And unfortunately, Will blew up to a whole different stratosphere and Carlton kind of fizzled out. I don't think we ever saw him do one or two to three things off, right, maybe, but nothing as, nothing as big. I'm just saying nothing. Yeah, well, let me pause you. He was the host of America's most funniest videos. That's big. Yeah, that's big. But I'm just saying acting, not hosting. I'm talking about acting. I'm talking about acting now. So in, in this, he felt like he was ostracized. And I think he's just reaching a little bit as to why his career may have fizzled off. That's just yeah. my assessment. I don't think it's the wife because we thought this before he got married to this woman. I think it's the character he played. Yeah. And I also feel like another person who gets that was Wayne Brady. Until Wayne Brady went on Dave Chappelle and said, is Wayne Brady going to have to choke a bitch? Then he got credit, like, and he got street cred after that, which is crazy, right? He had to go there. But Wayne Brady, he came on the Fox, Fox Hole radio. He was one of the most talented people when it comes to being off the cuff. Excuse me. Bless you. He really, <laughs> he really was. And, and I feel like, you know, it's the character. And, and you're right, Q. People do judge blackness based on one kind of a ster stereotypes. You know, God forbid um, you can't dance. God forbid you don't know how to fry chicken. God forbid you've never had chitlins. You're not black enough. And, and there's this new thing now with, with black folks where I, I, I know I have to be careful with this, but I feel like we're constantly, like, I, someone like me has to constantly prove I'm black enough. There's this whole, you can't sit with us if one of your parents isn't black. I don't get a, a discount on racism by racist people. They don't say, oh, your mom is white, so let me just be half as an ass to you. Let me discriminate half as much. <laughs> yes, I do recognize I do have a light skin privilege in this raggedy world because we do have that <laughs> color. But like, let's be clear. I'm still a black woman and I live like one. Right. right. You know, that also speaks to, remember Tashina Arnold? She's talked about this multiple times. And when we had her at Sirius XM, and I love Tashina Arnold, remember she said after she did Martin, she said for 10 years, for 10 years, she could not get another job in Hollywood. Did y'all even know that? I didn't even know that. I, I, I mean, I didn't know it, but I, I saw it because we didn't see her. And just one other thing for I want to point out. For a very I, long time. I, but One thing I want to point out before we go to commercial break is Alfonso must acknowledge that his white friendliness it actually worked in his favor because if it was not for that palatability with white people, he would have never landed the host of America's Most Funny Home Videos, which was once given to Bob Saget, the dad of Full House, and I forgot who after that. And trust and believe, that's a high paying job. He probably made more on America's Most Funniest Home Videos than he did on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and that's just true tea. So you can't pick and choose when being half white or tap dancing for white people, uh, when it works for you, there's no problem. Gotcha. When the jobs dry up, all of a sudden it's, you know, you, you know, you're giving me all of this. How about you just sit back and you retire and downsize on your America's most funny <laughs> videos money because you got more money doing that than most people ever will in their life. And with that, y'all, we'll go to commercial break and see y'all. <laughs> we'll be right back in two minutes. I mean, that's the only category you missed that we missed. <laughs> I mean, well, listen, we need to hurry up and get off the air. Fox Soul, so make sure. I don't know what kind of Mexican I ate. My stomach is toe up and I got a boo boo right now. So it's one or two things. <laughs> Al and Claudia could finish this show and I can go make it happen as quickly as I can. <laughs> I can sit here and hold it and mm, like Aretha. Or we could just try to get through this thing on a wing and a prep and the break of <laughs> Y'all let me know what it is. Matter of fact, go ahead and get a sponsorship <laughs> for some adult pampers. Because right about now, baby, the way this thing is bubbling and gurgling. Oh, my okay. God. You know what's so funny? We started off the show about this is the kind of show that's going to get an Emmy. And here we are talking about your bubble guts. Oh, Just my 20 God. 20 minutes ago, we talked about can the Emmy. Can I get some new? Can I get some, some new? Can I get some new for co-workers? <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, soulmates, welcome back. We appreciate you tuning in. All of y'all in the chat on YouTube, we are. We see the numbers. We see y'all. Uh, show us some love in the chat if you are enjoying our Friday show. Show us some hearts. Okay. Nice. 
We're back with another segment of Q&A with q and Al. This part of the show will allow our viewers to <laughs> Is it April Fools? Let's go All right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So uh, this part of the show will allow our viewers to send in questions for a chance to have Al Reynolds and Funky lend their ears and offer you some outstanding advice. Al and Q will have 30 seconds to each answer the question. Y'all ready for some Q&A? Say yes in the chat. Thumbs up. All Let's right. Here we it. go. Let's get it. First question. I am in a polygamous uh, relationship with a man and a woman, and I've grown unhappy. Oh, and there's a child involved. I want to take my child and get out, but the issue is um, I want to take the lady with me. I've grown out of love with my husband. Should I take the baby and leave, or should I convince our lady friend to come with me? Wow. Okay. You all have 30 seconds. Uh, Q, you want to take this? Should she take the baby and leave? She's in a polygamous relationship with a man and a woman. And she's thinking that she wants to take her baby and leave. And uh, she wants to take the lady with her. With her, right. So she but wants you don't to... want the man no more. No, right. she said, should I convince the lady friend to come with me? Or is that wrong? You know, so my, my, my question would depend on several things. Number one, how old is the child? How old is the child? Did she say? No. Okay. If the child is just an infant or a baby, whereas that change in dynamic won't affect the child much, and then all parties agree, I am all for it. If that child has now been raised in a household where I got two mommies and a daddy, you are, are, are in essence breaking up the kid's household. But then again, we always tell women, if your husband makes you unhappy, that's no reason to stay into the household because it makes for an unhappy relationship. I am for her being the healthiest so the kid can be the healthiest. So yes, okay. if you and the mama together is gonna to be the healthiest thing for you, that in turn will be the healthiest thing for the child. And she's married to the guy too, by the way. So she's gonna be leaving her husband with the side people girl. Get, okay. People get divorced all the time and co-parent. Mm, yes, they do. Al, what do you think about this? This sounds like something you might be into. <laughs> uh, well, this is what we need to know about these type of poly relationships. The relationship is not just between her and her husband and her and the additional person that she brought in, which is the woman. The relationship is also between him and the third person, okay? So the way that she's thinking, she's not factoring in that he has a relationship with the girl as well. He invited and let that relationship come into this. So I think in this particular case, my opinion would be that she needs to have an open and honest conversation with all parties involved to let him know also what is going on. So even though she wants to take the woman, like Q says, that child is, that dad is still that child's dad and he has to be a part of that child's life. That's the only responsible thing to do. So I think everything's cool if she's ready to go because she's not happy, but she still can't dispose of the man and take the girl like this. That's not an option. You have a child by that man. And the man also has a relationship with the woman. So I just think there needs to be a little bit of communication before there's an exit. OK, next question It's more directed to Al, but we can all chime in on this. Uh, really? Al, it says, Dear Al, how do you maintain class and grace after years of being dragged in the media and wrongfully characterized? How did you not clap back? I need help on how not to be confrontational. Any prayer suggestions, yoga, witchcraft, what you got? <laughs> good question. Oh, that is a really good question. Um, ooh, damn, that hit, that's hitting tight. That's hitting post. Um, for me, I always felt like uh, if it wasn't true, then I could rise above it, right? So I just felt the, what, how they were labeling me as to being a gold digger, a liar. It was deceitful that I wasn't truthful. I wasn't honest. You know, what they were painting of me, I didn't recognize that person. So the thing, only thing that gave me strength besides prayer, meditation, and working out was the fact that I knew that they didn't know me. And I want to say thank you, Claudia, again, and thank you, Fox Soul, for giving me the opportunity to share my true self with people so that they get to see the real me and the, the true me. And now that you have, you see, oh, well, damn, he is nothing like I thought he was. Isn't that great? 
awesome. Isn't that amazing when people can actually get to judge you based on you and not with right. someone who's scorned or has a, you know, has right. a negative thing to say about you? Um, do you want to add to that at all, Q? I, 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 well, I'll just say this, you know, I haven't known Al a long time, but I, I've told him this to his face and I'll tell it to the world. Like, I actually look up to Al. Al is one of the classiest, most poised, most sophisticated, most put together men I know. And what I admire the most is Al can party with the best of them, as y'all have seen on our <laughs> Instagram when we get together. But Al can also take his ass to work and tow that corporate line and get what he need to get out these white folks and teach what he need to teach to these black folks. He's a class act. And I salute this brother through and through. Thank you, Q. I'm going to piggyback off that. I remember when you first got on the show, there was people saying some negative things and why, why, why? And I said, you'll see. You'll see. I totally believe in this guy. And, um, you know, I like that. Uh, yeah, you def definitely do party like a rock star. <laughs> but you also, you know, in a world where now people kind of look down upon hard work and everybody thinks they're famous just because of Instagram and they think that makes you a real celebrity. It's, a, it's very noble and very um, admirable that you get up and you do go to a place of employment instead of what half these people are doing scam and to get the money to, to live that lifestyle. You actually put in the work and, and, and you do it well, Al. I'm really proud of you. I really am. They don't know. Al, Al is that dude. And if only people were privy to the type of brotherhood conversations that me and Al have offline, I call Al, I'd be like, Al, look, this what I'm feeling. And if it come out of my mouth, it's going to come out wrong. And I'll, be like, <laughs> and I'll be like, bro, I got it. And he handles the shit. Tonight, I was not feeling my best. I was in one of those mental spaces I was. Al picked up the phone. was like, what is it? That's what's bothering you? We ain't talking about it. We're going to move from this and this. I got you. They don't make many solid Black men the way they make Al. And Al Reynolds is definitely one of them. All right. Very nice moments before we go back to talking shit to each other. Okay. <laughs> Early this week, Lizzo, singer Lizzo, addressed a wild rumor that she crushed a fan at one of her concerts by... <laughs> I'm finna go. Shantae's they said, a... they, finna they, go. they said the rumor was that she leapt into a crowd, like a crowd surfing thing. And they try to say that she actually killed somebody. Did say they they said that she killed someone when she did that. So she had to come out. <laughs> Sorry, my cat was doing something. She had to come, <laughs> she had to come out and <laughs> she had to come out and, and address this rumor. We talking about rumors, right? She said, "I've seen a lot of things, a lot of annoying things about me on the internet, but the thing that bothers me the most is this rumor that I stage dived." at a concert and <laughs> they said she killed somebody huh she said first of all she said like that room it's a lie first of all i've never staged dived in my life i can't even see that like i can't see her doing that and then oh, she said i'm not big but i'm not that effing big <laughs> why do you think the trolls keep coming for lizza why why do y'all think this i'm i so in this story, I am in a lose-lose situation. <laughs> and after last week's outburst, <clears throat> I recognized that it would be in the best interest of myself and Fox Soul if I just pass this on to Al. No, you Al, <laughs> Al, we, Al, we only have a quick minute before we go to commercial. You go ahead. Okay, no, I mean, listen. I'm not reading that comment, Justin, that you said in the chat. I'm not reading that comment. <laughs> what did he say? Somebody said, free will, free willy. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I, I, think, I think what's so great about Lizzo, honestly, though, and this is why she's one of the biggest and most famous people on TikTok, is that she really knows how to give... She's I'll change your words. People. She's one of the biggest people on TikTok. Al, <laughs> Al, fix that. Fix that, please. Just fix it. I met one of the biggest stars. No, nope, nope. biggest. Y'all are really. Po most popular. Most, most successful. Famous, most visible. But the biggest. 
Don't say the biggest because you playing into the narrative, Al. Like you're one of those people that spread that rumor about the, the stage diving, and that's not what we're here for. We're here to listen, no, we are having a hard time figuring out. Let's this go to burger, commercial. So let's just go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not we're not mature enough for the story, Justin, and you know it. You know uh, we. Y'all know they should try to put this story. Look at Red Al. Oh, okay. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Free Willy. <laughs> We are going straight to hell. Like Aretha said, jump, jump, jump to it. No. No. <laughs> enough is a goddamn enough. All right. Since every <laughs> single week you hear you, your, your heathenist activity. Ain't diving going on for the Olympics. She trying to be in the next one. So she was practicing. <laughs> <coughs> she was practicing. Ooh, that bed. Oh, I feel that bed right there, man. Oh, baby. It wasn't no Sydney Poshcopedic, was it? It was, that, <laughs> it was that mattress box spring set that be on the side of the road for 300, honey. She no more good. Listen. Oh. This Bacardi don't kick in, and I'm with the shit. Where are we going? God, I can't see. Turn it up. I hate you, man. Words. I hate y'all. Oh. I hate y'all. You gotta go to the you know library. Black men are y'all. Q, you one of them right now. You ain't right now. Baby, it's something about these bracelets and this red cup got me feeling real <laughs> fishy and tipsy, baby. I'm the drunk auntie down to the picnic <laughs> for Claudia. We got a live read so we can pay these bills. Al, okay, shut let up. me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Do you know the average woman? I'm sorry. Scratch that. I got my mind in a different place. Hold on. <laughs> I can't do. I can't do this. I can't do the reading. <laughs> do you know that the average American has ninety-seven points they could add to their credit score, but has no idea how to get them? The data scientists at ScoreMaster cracked the code on how. Now, adding ninety-seven points to your credit score is like found money. It means fast loan approvals, huge discounts, and low interest rates on everything from buying or refinancing a home to leasing a new car to applying for a credit card. How fast is ScoreMaster? One member raised his credit score 33 points in just five days and another 43 points in just a couple of weeks. ScoreMaster is so easy that it takes about a minute to get started. And if you hurry, you can get to uh, try ScoreMaster for free. That's right. Try ScoreMaster for free and see how many plus points you can add to your credit score. Go ahead and go to uh, scoremaster.com slash T. That's scoremaster.com slash T. Once again, scoremaster.com slash T. All right, y'all. Okay. We got okay. another commercial. We're going to take uh, a, another commercial break. And we, we got a lot to talk about when we come back, y'all. We'll be back. Pray for us. Welcome back to TGIF. We were just talking during the break how grateful we are for this opportunity, the three of us together. Like we really rock with each other. And it's a it's as Funky said, it's a magical, it's a magical feeling. If you well, agree yeah. and feel like it's magical, please give us some uh, rainbows or something in the chat. Heart. And something. I would also like to take an extra poll in the chat. And could you please, for those of us who did not pass our primary colors, please drop down in the chat and let me know what color Al is right now. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what color in the crayon box that is, but please educate us out there. I can't stand these people. Claudia called told me, could I rearrange my light? I was looking pink. <laughs> you're, giving, you're giving me Charlotte's Web Wilbur pink. <laughs> Oh, a nasty, nasty boy hot dog real nice. <laughs> oh, yes. Y'all stop speaking on me. I said, I said, well, speaking I of like food, a piece of bologna. <laughs> I mean, you said it. But yeah, we love you, Al, regardless. We love your pink ass. But anyway, speaking of food, former Frito-Lay worker Brandon Ingram is speaking out about a horrific ordeal that he faced. He was electrocuted at work, resulting in him being severely disabled, and he was denied medical care. Now, he revealed in an interview that the company did not take care of him and even forced him to continue working after the incident. Brandon and his wife, Melissa, mentioned that the company would stalk the couple and, and their four kids. I saw the video where they were recording them, making sure that they were really, you know, he was really disabled and injured. Are you surprised to see a major corporation not show any empathy towards their employee? 
And uh, well, what do you think about this story? I'll just say this, and I'm going to pass it to Al. He worked for Frito Lay, and now he's free to <laughs> lay. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Al? Get that, get that out of his cup. Please get that out of his cup. Get they, it out of his cup. Hey, and this is a day when he's not feeling good, and he's emotional. Know, he's not- Probably, <laughs> this is that level. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I do have to say this. I, I, this this story really messed me up because the thing that really upset me the most is the fact that this young man served in the military, uh, went to Afghanistan or Iraq, one of those, came back. He had been working there for more almost twenty years, right, or fifteen years. He's had, he's worked there a very long time. Had received in excess of ten awards for his outstanding um, uh, work on the on the site. In addition to that, this young man, because his wife was an at home wife, used to work in excess of twenty hours a week. And I think when you have someone with that type of track record, that someone that you have acknowledged that they were amazing and great, never late to work, picked up extra shifts always met his performance numbers. When he does get hurt on the job, take care of your employee. I don't care if he's a part of a union or not. That man had paid his dues. And now the thing that really caught me was they had gotten so bad on money waiting for their disability to be approved that he said he had to rob his child's piggy bank in order to buy food to feed his family. That's disgusting. Frito-Lay and Pepsi, shame on you. Do right by this man. Do right by this family. And if you really want to show that you you can wrong a right, put a scholarship together for all three of those kids so they don't have a, ever have to worry about something like this depriving that family again. Shame really? on you, Pat. Shame on Fantas- you, Frito. Fantastic points, especially the part about them being really emotional about having to rob, um, you know, the children of of the piggy bank. Speaking of piggy banks, someone in the comments said Al is the color of spam. <laughs> Alice this, Midnight. Op- this, Opal this, Gale says, this is harassment on the job, ain't it? This has got to be. Op- Opal producer? Gale says, Al is Midnight Magenta. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to read some more comments. No, you um, don't need to read any more comments. Well, no, because Funky issued a call <laughs> to action. And here we are. We have to acknowledge our amazing fans that make us number one. Um, let's see. Uh, Bridget Wilson, Bridget Williams says rose colored. Um, oh. Alice heading towards magenta. Yeah. Uh, rose gold. No. <laughs> Al, okay. I got hey. a per- Al, I got a personal question. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. And we have the game at the end, too. Let's leave some time. Wait, wait the game. a minute. Go ahead. It's it's- is it the same color or is it darker? Because you know how some of them light skinned guys, it'd be darker. Like, I think it's darker. I would say darker. What the fans think? So you think I'm gonna tell you. I will tell you what it is. It's half and half. It's two tone. It got <laughs> vitiligo. <Ooh. laughs> it got vitiligo. <laughs> Wait, is the top part like one color and the bottom the frank yeah. one color? <laughs> Uh, it got big a lago. Okay, you're not talking about nobody's big a lago. When we got your, when we got oh, your new picture in the text, and you look like you had yeah, extra money. It could be a cocoa butter commercial. So you needed some, you needed some lotion. Stop telling my business on this TV. Go to the okay. next thing, Claudia. This is the next thing. You guys have your signs with the names, everyone's name. Let's play this again. Let's yes, play this damn thanks. game. Oh lord. <sighs> Why have I seen both of y'all's like anyways? I don't want to work here no more because y'all <laughs> <laughs> oh here we go with the bullshit. Okay, listen. Okay. Before we begin the show, uh we're gonna play a little fun game of who's most likely to. I will call a scenario and we all hold up the sign of the host that's most likely to do this. I'm gonna join in with y'all on this one as well. Uh okay, so y'all ready? Mm-hmm. And soulmates, please feel free to join along and play in the chat. Okay, here we go. Who's most likely to have sex with a homeless man? I can't see a sign. <laughs> I, I says Claudia. <laughs> it's, it's Claudia. <laughs> really? Me. 
Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Hey, fair enough. Hey, it's a game. Okay. Uh, True story, and we'll save it for another show when I'm real drunk. I've you been. had sex with a homeless person. <laughs> of course you did. That's why I had up my cue. Okay. Um, who's my most li- okay? Who's most likely to get a divorce in a week into their marriage? <laughs> Funky. <laughs> I can't see it, Al. We can't see your sign. You got it. Sounds. My like, sign says funky. You can he, Al use an invisible ink. Look at that. We can't see anything. Sorry, okay. Funky. Who's Elder most likely bro. to have the highest body count? Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> you lying, Claudia? You're such a monster. As what random. What Nene <laughs> 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 She said your clit has left the building. <laughs> uh, I said Claudia too, Q. <laughs> y'all are hating. Okay, okay. Who's most likely to quit the show after winning the lottery? Ooh, me. <laughs> we can't see none of your signs, Al. None of your signs. I'm kidding. I wouldn't quit. I could win a gazillion dollars. I wouldn't quit this. This is too much fun. Okay. Who's most likely to sleep their way out of getting a speeding ticket? Funky. <laughs> you slept your way into a whole lifestyle with that damn woman. <laughs> Who's most likely to remain single forever? Me. Probably me, but I'll put Al since I can't put me. Okay, last question before we go. Who's most likely to get plastic surgery and lie about it? Ooh, I already did. Already did. Nope. You're lying. I haven't got Girl, you got your booty done. You got a BBL. <laughs> you got a BBL, bitch. You're lying. You got a BBL. <laughs> Where am I get fat from to do a BBL? Them lips. <laughs> <laughs> you know we- what, y'all? I, I'm going to make an HR complaint. Do we have an HR department? <laughs> black, no. Black people company, no. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. you can just snitch and someone higher up, but they ain't going to do nothing about it. We all good. Uh, Listen, I want to thank my co-host <laughs> for being such amazing sports, Al Reynolds and Funky Dine. But thank you so much. Job well done. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Catch the replay tomorrow and get those numbers up. Uh, don't forget, TJF airs twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. Okay, stick around. The Tammy Mac Late Show is up next. Bye, y'all. Hey, Tammy girl. Bye, guys. <laughs>